Yo, what's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another Tyler Perry Sisters Review. This is season four, episode 16, entitled Some Sort of Woman. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning family member, you already know what it is and what it always will be. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if that's what you choose to do. If not, just sit back and uh, listen. And let's just get into this thing. So we open up where we left off last week and we see Calvin and Q. This was another, I don't know how long this review going to be, just to be honest. So we, we just going to see how it flow. Um, Calvin and Q, a pointless scene that we had to sit through with Q attempting to take advantage of a drunken Calvin. Then Tyler tried to make the scene humorous. I don't know. I <laughs> That be the thing, like. You're talking about this man attempting to take advantage of someone who is drunk. And then in the next breath, they're kicking. Like, no, sir. No, I I didn't like any of the scenes with them and Maurice or anything like that. So the next scene is, so I'm not going to spend time on it. Next scene, it is Karen and Aaron, and they were getting it in. Do you hear me? They was getting it. He was in it. He was all up in it. Then the girls <laughs> bust into her place. I was so glad she told them to get their ass out. I'm just like, first of all, I think they did knock or they called her name before they entered. But I'm like, you didn't give her, give her opportunity to respond. Y'all barged into this woman's house as if it was such a, you know, emergency. And it wasn't. So they went into the hallway and Karen was getting, you know, putting her robe on and everything like that. And um, she told Aaron that she was so damn close. And Aaron was like, you know, for the second time. And I was like, talk that. You better talk your stuff, Aaron. Hey, man. One, once is good. Twice is great. <laughs> Three times, you mine. You know what I'm saying? You mine. That's how I look at it. But she went out there. And this is, this answers my question that I posed last week. Like, did Andy... Was Andy playing dumb or did Tyler really forget what the hell he wrote? We got our answer tonight. Tyler forgot what the hell he wrote because Andy was acting as if she had no idea Karen went to the doctor. She didn't know what the doctor said. I'm like, and clearly that was a long ass scene last week between Karen and Andy in her office. And I'm just like, really, Tyler? Tyler has forgotten some things in the past, but for me, I have never seen it so close in nature. Like, not the very next episode of a, a large portion of a scene was almost as if it never happened. So I'm just like, you know, come on, dude. And, and, and that'd be the thing. Like, I'm one of those people that, that if something doesn't make sense, if I'm watching something and it's not connecting or this, I could tell the writer really just forgot some stuff. I cannot stay I can't stick with it like I lose interest so fast because I'm like so what part am I supposed to believe and the sad part is with sisters you got to think too damn much we got to remember the timeline because in in essence Karen shouldn't be no damn four weeks like it's four weeks pregnant it's so many things that you just really have to block out reality when you're watching sisters because a whole lot of stuff just doesn't make sense and this was one of them for andy just to pretend like she didn't know and then andy wasn't pretending it's how you know it's how tyler wrote it it's just stupid so they're out in the hall okay you went to the doctor what happened so on and so forth karen was trying to get back in there with aaron to get her second you know her second situation <laughs> and I was glad she told them to leave. Like, I really was because normally she would have had him leave, had the girls come in. I, I, you know, it, it's just sad. It's, it's, it's just sad. But anyway, they was like, you know, we going to meet you. Um, they was going to come to her job or whatever. And she was trying to go back in there, like I said, and finish what started with her and or what was happening with her and Aaron. And so the girls were, you know, talking amongst themselves, stating that they would be at her job. And then it was like, man, that's going to be super early. But they needed to find out everything that they was asking. So they they leave. Karen goes back in. And Aaron is, you know, putting his clothes on. And I I wanted them to have a moment. I'm just, I, I'll get to that later. I wanted them to have a moment. But, you know, he I did appreciate what he was saying because it was, it was the truth. 
you know, a lot of things with Karen is like so, so far drenched in confusion. It's kind of, and like he said, it's kind of hard to know where he stands with her because it's always something different. So I can respect that. I do understand where he's coming from. And, you know, of course she was like, you know, don't tell me that she wanted to finish, but you know, she, she knew he was telling the truth. So we get to Andy and Robin and KJ, <laughs> KJ Smith looked damn good. Okay. She looked good. And Robin asked her if she was really over Gary and Andy pauses, but she says, yes, Robin doesn't believe her. And I don't blame him. And so she basically asked, like, you know, do you think that I would have you over if I wasn't over him? And he, she was like, what kind of person you think I am or something like that? And he was like, you're a woman. I said, what the hell are you trying to say? I'm like, Andy is an emotionally stunted woman who just does not deal with her stuff. So don't group all of us in there together, even though I knew what, you know, Robin meant when he said what he said. And so... We see, you know, they're, they're kissing and everything like that. We see uh, Gary's perv as watching them. So Jake catches him. And, you know, he talks about how he bought her this expensive place. And, you know, so on and so forth. And like I said in my um, review that I did for the, the preview, it's like, you bought Andy this. However, you knew that wasn't going to stop her from doing anything. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really understand gary's perspective to me gary is becoming a non-factor i'm really not understanding like his purpose anymore a lot of things like that for me that's what it's looking like the purpose of some of these characters just doesn't make any sense to me and it's so hard for me to you know be interested in what's happening so when gary leaves out jake goes and look in the telescope and he was like i didn't find, i'm sorry i just didn't find it funny he was like, you know, like he's giving her a back shot. So that means that you saw Andy having sex with Robin. And I just felt like, you know, with Tyler, it was a it was a part in there where Andy asked Robin, like, you think I'm a hoe? And he was like, no, like I've never thought that. And I'm just like, but then you write for a person who she doesn't know to see her in that manner. Like, I just, I don't know. I didn't find it funny. I didn't, I didn't like it. You know, Tyler can write whatever the hell he wants to write. But I just felt like that was just so intrusive. And I just felt like you could have did Andy better than that. Like, come on, you could have did her better than that. Maurice, Calvin, and Q. Maurice comes home from the club. I hated this scene. Um, I don't understand why Q was stripped down to his boxers. That, I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Even Maurice asked him, like, why you ain't got on no clothes? We did see Calvin go into Maurice's room, but I'm still trying to understand the reason that Q didn't have on any clothes. I, I just really despise that character. And I know that he's going to be around for the fifth season, but I, I so strongly dislike him. Like, I don't give a damn. I do not like when he appears on my screen. His storyline is so just foul and corrupt. I don't even know how to express it. Like, I know that there are certain characters where they can redeem themselves. And I'm not saying that anyone, any one character is unredeemable, but with Q it's like you, he, we know he's trash. He's a trash ass person who uses people and he's still doing it. So I'm not really sure why he's around. I just don't get it, but he ends up taking Calvin back to his room and you know, that's the, that's the end of them. So the girls are waiting for Karen at her job. And um, at first she was going to talk to them outside. And Andy was like, you know, a normal person would let us in. So they go inside. She tells them what the doctor says. And they basically, you know, put two and two together as far as it could be Zach's child or it could be Aaron's child. She lets them know that she's barely four weeks pregnant. And I'm just. <laughs> We're on episode 16. This is episode 16. And I am so sick and tired of Fatima and Zach being a constant part of the sisters conversation. Let them, let Zach and Fatima do their thing. I'm like, let Karen be happy. Let Karen be happy. Her entire conversation for, for the most part, when she started talking about Aaron, she was like, you know, she's not happy with him. 
Then she goes to say, I feel like I'm I'm losing him and I really like him a lot. And I'm like, you know, Tyler, what are you doing? Like, honestly, I feel like, and I've said this several times before in the past, it is concerning to me, just as a black woman, that when you watch Tyler Perry's TV shows for the most part, it's like he doesn't believe in happiness. None of the sisters on this show is happy. Like, nobody, it's, it's always like, I think life in itself brings forth its own drama and mishaps and, and things of that nature. The things that these women go through is utterly ridiculous to the point. So I'm like, what is your issue, my dude, with allowing these women to experience pure bliss for one episode? Just one. I don't get it. There's more ways to write drama than to see these women not happy and not in effective and healthy relationships. It just really pisses me off, to be perfectly honest with y'all. I did enjoy what Danny said to Karen as far as like, you don't have to have everything figured out. You don't. And she doesn't. But the one thing I do not like, don't play with Aaron's feelings. Like you do need to come to a definitive answer or solution with that. Either you want to take things slow, either you really want him to give you space to leave you alone but it needs to be definitive because as he told her in their pre in their scene and he was like you know my feelings are involved too you know and i just sometimes i just think that the character of karen tyler has written her to be very careless with aaron's feelings i, I really do that's how i feel at times but i'm still rooting for him i really like i really do want her to be with him that's just that's just me all right you may not like it but that's just me so yeah, like I said, I did enjoy what Danny told her. Like, you don't have to have everything figured out. You have nine months. Like, take it slow, but do what you need to do. And it was, I, Tyler tends to do it. He tried to make serious things funny that comes off, you know, hurtful or disrespectful. And then he tried to, like, make it to where that person has something credible to say when it's all said and done. So, Danny lets them know that Sabrina's dating the prince. She didn't want to tell them anything. She told them that she would tell them later, but she did confirm that she was dating, you know, a prince. She met a random guy who just happened to be a prince. And, <laughs> and Karen was like, a prince, a, a prince of what? And Danny was like, that that baby brain. You're like, what, like, what you think, sis? But that, that was funny to me. And um, Pam comes in. I've been loving Pam these past, you know, past two episodes she's been in. And so Pam came in and um, she bought Karen breakfast. And that was a cute scene between them. I really hope that we can see that type of dynamic between them. I do not. Pam is nosy as hell, but I do not like when Karen's, you know, when they're back and forth becomes disrespectful. Um, and, and that's what it was the last time that we saw them interact. And so it was a cute moment. She was telling Karen, like, you don't eat enough. You don't drink enough water. And I'm just here to make sure, you know, that you're okay. Like, you got a baby. You got to, you know, think about or what have you. So I thought that was a really cute moment. And I did enjoy it. So Andy and Hayden, and um, he wants to know how she got Fatima out of jail. And we basically saw this scene in the preview. Um, She was basically telling him, like, I'm glad I have you wondering. He was like, nah, this came from higher up. Like, how did you do this? So basically, you know, uh, I'm not feeling a whole gay scenario with Robin. Um, I'm like, you know, for you to be the boss, you should have better things to do with your time than pretend to be gay. I, it's, it's not clicking for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not clicking for me. I don't. It, 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 to me, it's dumb. I'm just going to put it out there. For me, it's dumb. And so I'm like, both Andy and Robin are careless First of all, why are y'all talking about anything that y'all do outside of the office, in the office? Like, I, I really enjoyed it last night. Andy was like, no, we're not going to talk about that. But in the same scene, she's asking him, like, you going you gonna to call me later? You call? Like, I'm like, what are y'all doing? I ain't going to lie. I had a brief fling with the coworker a long time ago. No one knew because we did not change the way we interacted. We were not giving suggestive looks. We were not saying suggestive things. We were not acting any differently than how we were before our dynamic change. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at them like Hayden picked them out from the very beginning. When Robin first came on the scene, 
Hayden picked it up almost immediately that there was something with him and um, Andy. And they got upset with him because he made an observation. So that's why I was like, I'm not really sure what the end goal is for Robin playing with Hayden's mind. Because at the end of the day, Hayden is the one who can pull a sexual harassment thing because you're touching him. You're letting him know he's your type after he told you he's not interested. So Tyler going to have to wheel this in because it's not making sense to me. Like, it, I don't... I, you gonna play with his head how so i said it i said it was gonna backfire because i'm like hayden and gary talk hey gary was gonna i think i said it right hayden and gary and gary was gonna be the one to tell hayden that robin is not gay that robin is not gay and we saw that happen a lot of these i'm, I'm sorry i i could not get into this episode and y'all probably can hear based on this review i'm sorry um Fatima and Zach so Andy calls Fatima to let her know that um Robin was able to get uh Zach a visitation and couldn't get him out but visitation so um I'm gonna just finish so they go and I don't know I guess Zach and Fatima were supposed to be funny in this scene you know, he was like, you know, this is all your fault. You got to be careful. You get that thing to that munchkin ass. Like, he can't handle no stallion. And she like, yeah. Uh, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? What? I, you know, I'm sorry. I I don't even. This probably, for me, I'm sorry. This probably was like one of the worst episodes. Because I'm just thinking, What? What? And I know people talk about Aaron saying that, you know, Aaron need to stop telling Karen. Like, he brings up that I love you a lot. He didn't say it in this episode. But even, like, with um, Zach, he was like, you know, because I love you. Like, I really love you. And I and I was just like, what? I, I don't know. <laughs> it was just, like, bad writing, bad acting. I don't give a damn what nobody say. To me, I just, I didn't like, this This scene was crappy. But Andy, KJ did make me laugh when she was like, you know, she from the streets. And Zach and Fatima looked at her like, what? I'm going to need you to clarify that. What you mean you from the street? Like, yeah, I'm a street girl. Like, all of the streets. I said, sis, you might be for the streets, but you're not from the streets. And trust me, those two words are a big distinction Okay, from the streets and for the streets. And baby, you ain't from them. Okay, so I was like, wow. So the, the lawyer comes in and Zach was telling him that he's off probation. Um, And he was like, nah, you know, when you were off, but then when you failed to pay child support, you were put back on. And I will, I will say, I did appreciate what Andy told them. Like, y'all got to look at this. Hayden is the smart one. Y'all in here. He's like meddling in y'all relationship and you are allowing this person to get the best of y'all. Like that's really what's happening. That's why I said um, people can say what they want. Hayden is a little asshole. Hayden is very annoying. But Hayden is the smartest person on this show. He's the smartest person because he knows he can get under your skin. He knows he can, he can cause a reaction and cause you to respond in a way that will benefit his cause. Like the fact that Zach and... I said, okay, you're trying to make, like, Zach stupid. But, all right. The fact that Zach didn't know that somebody can sue you for assaulting them. Like, you think you could just walk around, put your hands on people, and, like, nothing? I don't know. I didn't like the fact that, to me, it was like they were trying to make Zach look like he was stupid. And I do not believe that Zach is, is a stupid person. I didn't like that narrative. I'm like, so he didn't know this? Like, he really didn't know? Okay, this 37-year-old man who've been in jail multiple times and know somebody could sue him for assaulting them. Okay. Whatever you say, Tyler, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, they were saying that they were trying to give Zach 10 to 15 years for what he did. Uh, and I'm just like, that. that's a bit excessive. Uh, I don't like Zach, but he's not, he didn't do anything to deserve 10 to 15 years. I'm sorry. That's, that's just me. But overall, I didn't like the episode. I didn't like it. I thought it was for for us to be on episode 17 next week and we only have 22 episodes. What is going on? So we have like what six episodes left and 
if you missed any episodes, you can watch this and be caught up. Like, as someone, when Sisters was, like, one of my favorite shows, like, no lie. And if you go back and listen to my old reviews, I would say that all the time. Like, Sisters is one of my, was one of my favorite shows. And now watching it, it's such a disappointment. Like, it's such a... I don't even know. I do not get excited about sisters. Like I literally, I can literally forget that it actually comes on. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just gotten that bad. Like honestly, it just really has gotten that bad. And and the sad part is, you have these talented men and women who are amazing. Like if you if you watch any of their stuff, it's, I'm gonna use especially KJ and Ebony because I've seen them in the most things outside of sisters and um. I'm in Ebony who played Alicia on Tough Love. It was a web series. If you've never seen it, it's on YouTube. Watch it. It's really good. And she had a, a strong and solid fan base from that show. And I just look at how Tyler has done that character of Karen. And it's so disappointing. Like, it really is. It's so disappointing. And I know that um, Zatima, whenever it uh, premieres, and I have had people ask me about the show. And I am going to watch it. And I am going to review it. And in my mind, I feel like he's going to do the same thing with that show. It might start off good. And then he going to find a way to jack it up. Like, that's how the, to me, that is the the formula of Tyler shows. They start out good. And then you're like, damn, what happened, my dude? This is the prime example why you need a writer's uh, room. This is a prime example why you need someone to give you constructive criticism constructive criticism when it comes to your scripts and i know tyler thinks he knows everything about about black women and he does not and this show is a prime example of why he needs to have feminine energy and he needs to have women who he can talk to and just bounce some ideas off i i already know before anybody say anything comment i do know that sisters was created based on conversation that he had with some women and i get that the conversation should have continued. The conversations should have continued because it feels like all of this stuff is just coming from Tyler's mind. You know what I'm saying? Like Tyler is just trying to entertain himself. And don't get me wrong. I know there are really people who rock with sisters. I rock with sisters too because I watch it every damn Wednesday. But it's like the essence to me, it has gone, um, you know, from the show. It's just, it, it, and it could be so great. It really can. It could be so great. And it's just, I think, you know, the damage has been done. I don't think this show will ever be great. I think it'll be us Wednesday by Wednesday just trying to figure out what's going to happen and see how everything plays out. That's how I look at it. But, you know what I'm saying? I wish nothing but success and blessings to the cast of Sisters because for them to get those trash-ass scripts and be able to act it in the way that they do, I give them props for that. But, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be negative at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving y'all my thoughts. I'm just giving y'all my thoughts. I would love to hear what y'all thought about the episode and just how, you know, and I know a lot of you guys are, you know, fans who started watching the show when they first aired like me and you've been watching and you've been faithful from the beginning. And then like how you felt about sisters when it first aired and then how you, how do you feel about it now? Are your feelings the same? Have they changed? Are you disappointed as a viewer? Like, is it meeting your expectations? Is it exceeding your expectations? Is it not me? Like, how do y'all really feel about the show? Like, real talk. Because I, I just couldn't get into this episode. I really couldn't. But I thank you guys for listening. And until next time, I will holler at y'all later. Y'all be safe out there. One.